the topic that I'll be talking about today is specific latent heat and state changes. So before getting into uh, the specificities or the definition of what exactly latent heat is, um, it's really important to understand the concept of how a state is changed and what processes it goes through. So let's say we're taking the example of a solid. When a solid is heated, it may melt and change its state from solid to liquid, right? Um, if ice is heated, it becomes water. Now, this is common sense that we, if we think about putting a block of ice in, let's just say, outside in sun, uh, we do expect it to melt and become into uh, and turn into water. So that is what we call melting. But, you know, there are some technical uh, technical terms or technicalities between it of how it exactly happens and if it ha happens at a one specific temperature or can it happen at over a range of temperature. The opposite process freezing occurs when a liquid solidifies. Similarly, if we put a glass of water in, uh, let's just say, a freezer for some hours, we do expect it to turn into solid. So that is freezing. A pure substance melts at a definite temperature called the melting point. It solidifies at the same temperature, sometimes that is called the freezing point. Now, this is really important to understand that what exactly is going on in here uh, when it says that it melts at, this, at, melts at the same temperature and that it freezes at the same temperature or at the same freezing point too. So, during solidification, a substance loses heat to its surrounding, but its temperature does not fall. Now, over here in this example too, we are talking about solidification, which can also be referred as uh, freezing or, you know, I mean, that, that's what um, it's commonly called um, solidification or let's just call it freezing, right? So over here, we ha initially have this solid substance and then, uh, sorry, a liquid substance and then it freezes and then it turns into a uh, solid. So that is how exactly it works. This is called the melting point, but we can also refer it, this, this over here, it's called melting point, but we can also refer to it as um, freezing point. So if I refer to it as freezing point, it will be completely okay. Freezing. Okay, so this is freezing point two. Now, um, the question is that if, if, if this is the diagram of, how, of the behavior, this is a diagram which shows the behavior of a substance when it is going through freezing, that initially it is, saw, it is liquid over here, you know, when the temperature is high, and, and uh, gradually as the temperature is increasing, we can see that the temperature, is, uh, as the time is increasing, we can see that the temperature is decreasing. So with the decrease of temperature, it really tells us that we are going towards the freezing process. So liquid over here, this whole stage depicts liquid. And then from A to B, we have uh, the freezing process. And then B onwards, it, we do have entirely solid substance. Solid SOL should do. So now, now there are some really characteristics um, of this graph that we can clearly see that you know when the when the object is going through the process itself I, we can see that the line isn't tilted or the line is not in an angle it is clearly horizontal it is completely horizontal so that tells us that uh, when a substance is going through a state change it can be freezing melting or any other thing the um, temperature does not change and that really gives us this uh, horizontal line so and and the other thing is first thing is that the temperature does not change because we can see that there is a horizontal line and the other thing is that in this case in the in the first section of the graph we can just uh, divide this into three sections right so the first section of the graph we clearly know that that is uh, liquid that is completely liquid right and then the horizontal section we don't know we'll talk about it right now after some time and then b onwards we know that it is completely solid now between a and b when the temperature does not change what is happening is that let's just say if we talk about freezing 
the molecules are coming closer. Some of them are already there in the solid phase, that they are closer together, that they, can, they are in the solid uh, phase. And some of them are not there completely yet. They are in the liquid phase or they are getting that energy, you know, or they are sorry, releasing that energy because when the, uh, when in, during freezing, energy is released and during, let's just say melting, they take in energy. So, so, so this is basically what's happening. So this is the transition phase uh, when a substance is melting or it's going through some state change. It is a transition state. And we can't really write if, 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 if we have complete liquid over here or we have complete solid over here. However, I can completely write that over at point A, it is completely liquid. And, it, and at point B and point B onwards, it's completely solid. But between those two, uh, these two points, it's transitioning between them. Some of them is liquids, half of it or half of it not. You know, there isn't any proportion uh, that we can specify, but you know, some of it is liquid, some of it is solid. So during solidification, a substance losing heat, uh, loses heat to its surrounding, but its temperature doesn't fall. Conversely, when a solid is melting, the heat supply does not cause a temperature rise. Heating, heat is added, but the substance does not get hotter. Now, the reason why the substance does not get hotter is because that energy is basically being utilized to break the bonds, to break the energy bonds, uh, because uh, when a substance is in, let's just say, when a substance is basically in liquid form, and we have to convert it into, let's just say, gas form, so it, there are some uh, there are some bonds that need to be broken because when a substance is in liquid form, it has some it has some intermolecular forces between them. There are some bondings between them, but when they are solid, they're com when they're gas. I'm sorry, when they're in gaseous form, they're completely free from all these intermolecular forces, and uh, the heat that we apply to it basically basically overcomes the intermolecular forces that were in between them. So although we are adding heat, the heat is not being used to cause a temperature rise. It is rather being used to break the bonds between the particles or the molecules itself. So for example, a temperature of a well-stirred ice water mixture remains at zero degrees until all the ice is melted. Heat that is absorbed by a solid during melting or given out by a liquid during solidification is called the latent heat of fusion. So, so the amount of heat that is given out um, by a liquid during the solidification, I'm saying solidification because this graph is solidification graph. And I'm gonna draw the graph of melting too, but over here we are depicting solidification or freezing. So the, so, so the heat given out by the liquid during solidification is called the latent heat of fusion. We'll use the word fusion over here. And latent means hidden and fusion means melting. So it's really also important to understand that the heat given out by the liquid to turn into solid will be equal to the heat absorbed by the, uh, by the solid to convert into liquid. So they're both uh, the same amount. The, the difference is that when it is converting from uh, solid to liquid, it, uh, the substance absorbs heat. However, when it is the opposite process, that when, it, uh, that when the substance is um, solidifying or it is converting from liquid to solid, it gives out heat. So the latent heat does not cause a temperature change, so it seems to disappear. Because we can't really observe that kind of, uh, you know, the, the effect that it has, the heat that, we're being, that we are supplying to it, since it's working on the intermolecular scale. So we call it hidden. So that's why the word latent means hidden and fusion means melting. And that's how we get this terminology. So, yeah. So I, I said that I'm going to draw the diagram of, this is the di these are the diagrams of uh, sorry this is this graph is the diagram of freezing or solidification but if i have to draw the diagram of melting it's not going to be the same the heat required to convert that amount of solid into liquid is going to be the same going to be the same but it's just going to be you know in the opposite direction
that initially or maybe it does not start from a reason why did i assume obviously it doesn't start with the reason temperature might not be zero let's just say yeah so yeah so this is going to be the temp uh, the the graph of uh, any object or a substance that is melting so and you can see that the the common thing or the common part is that the melting or the freezing transition stage is the same so in this case this first portion is basically uh, solid and then this portion is liquid because uh, i'm depicting melting over here and between a to b again we have the same thing that it is melting so it it can be both uh, towards the b point it is it might be more solid and towards the a point it is more of liquid form but we can't really say you know of how much it is liquid there are ways to basically uh, scale that but that's not in the scope of this syllabus so this is just a diagram that shows that the energy required to change a substance from solid to liquid is called the latent heat of fusion. Okay, so now coming into the basic formula, etc. of latent heat of fusion and how we use it. So the specific latent heat of fusion that is depicted by L subscript F of a substance is the quantity of heat needed to change unit mass from solid to liquid without temperature change. So, uh, the reason why we have unit mass over here is because the word specific in physics always refers to a property of a material or a substance. So, so we measure it in terms of unit mass. So the amount of heat that is required for a substance to change its unit mass of solid to unit mass of liquid without any temperature change is called the specific latent heat. Um, the units of specific latent heat are joules per kilogram or joules per gram depends on what unit mass you're taking if the unit mass is of uh, if the unit mass is of kilograms then we use kilograms and if it is grams then we use grams in general the quantity of uh, heat q to change a mass m from solid to liquid is given by m multiplied by the uh, LF or the latent heat of fusion. It's really simple to uh, you know really know that if if you know this is a property which is basically joules into gram joules divided by kilograms. So if we want a quantity in joules, we just need to multiply it with mass. So that's exactly what we're doing. That if we want the amount of heat for a specific mass of substance that it needed to convert from solid to liquid, we just multiply the latent heat of fusion with the amount of mass, and we get the heat. Okay, as you've studied the spe uh, specific latent heat of melting or specific latent heat of fusion, etc. Uh, similarly, we do have, since we have other uh, state changes processes too, like uh, vaporization or, uh, you know, uh, condensation. So, similarly for them, we have uh, specific latent heats too. So the specific latent heat of vaporization is the latent heat uh, that is also needed to change a liquid into vapor. Uh, the reading of a thermometer placed in water that is the reading of a thermometer placed in water that is boiling remains constant at 100 degrees. Uh, it remains constant at 100 degrees. It, yeah, so, so I'm sorry. It remains constant at 100 degrees. It remains constant at 100 degrees because that is the boiling temperature. So the temperature does not change. The temperature is not rising. However, that temp uh, that sorry that heat that we are applying to it is utilized to uh, to get rid of the intermolecular forces or the bonding that the particles had uh, in themselves to. To basically bind them together. So if we are using that, it it basically it basically overcomes the bonding that it had in you know inside of it, and now the particles are free and they turn into gaseous form. Similarly, when a steam condenses to water, latent heat is given out. So it's it's really 
it's really the same as freezing and um, freezing and melting is similar to condensing and vaporization that in um, vaporization and melting heat is being absorbed however in condensation and freezing heat is being given out the specific latent heat of vaporization lv of a substance is the quantity of heat needed to change unit mass uh, from liquid to vapor without change in temperature again a specific latent heat is measured in joules per gram or joules per kilogram and the quantity of heat to change mass m from liquid to vapor is given by q into ml here it is LV. yeah and and it's really important to know that uh, over here we have lv uh, which means we are talking about vaporization and and in when we're talking about fusion we had lf which meant that we were talking about uh, which which was basically when we're talking about fusion so vaporization for v and then f for fusion Latent heat and the kinetic theory. The kinetic theory explains latent heat of fusion as being the energy. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to go over this again. That it talks about the energy that enables the molecules of a solid to overcome the intermolecular forces that hold them in place. So I'm going to try to depict this through um, you know, a drawing. If this is a box, uh, you know, if, if with solid particles in it. Sorry. So they're really close to each other and they're tightly packed with really negligible intermolecular spaces, etc. Depends on what kind of uh, packing it had. So what's basically happening in uh, fusion is that these these particles are only in vibratory motion and because they're really packed together and they have a lot of intermolecular forces. So when we apply heat to them, uh, they start moving more because they gain more kinetic energy uh, initially. Uh, but then this ener energy is used to overcome the intermolecular forces. So the vibratory motion about a fixed position changes to slightly greater range of movement they have as liquid molecules and the solid melts. So when all these, uh, all of these, you know, forces that were binding them together, they're overcome, like the even the last molecule that was there, then uh, the temperature starts to rise because the, uh, uh, the potential energy of the molecules has been overcome and now the average kinetic energy happens to increase, you know when that uh, has happened. If a solid molecule, if, if liquid molecules are to overcome the force holding them together and gain the freedom to move around independently as gas molecules, they need a larger amount of energy. They receive this as latent heat of vaporization, like the latent heat of fusion. Increases the potential energy of the molecules, but not their kinetic energy. It also gives the molecules the energy required to push back the surrounding atmosphere in the large expansion that occurs when a liquid vaporizes. So in this case, the same situation is happening that initially we needed uh, solid forces so that they can, you know, uh, turn into liquid. Now we even need more, you know, more amount of heat so that it can just move around independently and they have no forces whatsoever that are binding them together. And apart from that, it also needs more energy to push back to the surrounding molecules of the temperature of, uh, or the particles of the atmosphere or the air that are surrounding them to as they largely expand since the volumes of gases are so much larger than the volumes of liquid. Now, uh, if I put, if uh, now there are two things. I can take a block of ice and put it in a pan and then heat it using a stove. And the other thing that I can do is that I can take a block of ice and I can just put it in the sun and it will gradually melt. Similarly, what I can do is that I can take an amount of water and I can put it in, put it on the stove in a pan and then let it boil or let it turn into gas. Let's just call it 
turn into gas. And similarly, I can put some water or some liquid in a glass or in a pan and put it in the sun and wait for it for, you know, a longer time and it will turn into gas, you know, eventually. So what's basically the difference? The difference is that in one situation, we are boiling the substance and the other situation, it's evaporating. Now, what exactly is the difference between evaporation and boiling is what we're going to talk about right now. A few in evaporation, what happens is that a few energetic molecules that are close to surface, they have more tendency to escape and they can become gas molecules because their they, the their bonding with the surface molecules is um, is not really strong, so that happens. Yeah. So if I have this, let's just say a glass of water and it has liquid in it, there are some molecules that are, you know, there it, it has molecules, right? It consists of molecules. But the molecules that are on the surface, they do have the, the bonding that they have with their neighbor molecules. It's not that strong and they have more tendency to escape. Since they, they require less energy, they require less heat uh, to, to break free. So this, this process basically occurs in uh, evaporation that these surface molecules, they gradually uh, break off and they become gas molecules. And similarly, when this layer goes off, the other layer becomes the surface layer. And, you know, if, if, if this process lingers for more, eventually whole uh, glass of water turns into gas. So this process occurs at all temperatures and it's called evaporation. As we've already studied, the vaporization or boiling occurs at one specific temperature. This is not the case in evaporation. Evaporation can occur at any temperature. And it happens more rapidly when the temp... Now, these are some factors that basically accelerate uh, the, uh, the evaporation. Number one is when the temperature is higher. So obviously, when the temperature is higher, that means the molecules are already moving fast. They have higher uh, kinetic energy and they have more tendency to escape or break free their bonds. The other is that the surface area of the liquid is large. That is also again the case that if the surface area is large, that means more molecules have uh, the tendency to escape or more molecules have the, have the capacity to just take in small amount of heat and just, you know, turn it turn into gas molecules. And the other one is a gas or, uh, sorry, a wind or draught is blowing over the surface, carrying vapor molecules away from the surface thus stopping them from returning to liquid and making it easier for the liquid molecules to break free. Again, this is really self-explanatory that uh, that the, the particles that run the surface that had the tendency to escape, they will, they, they, it will be easier for them to escape if there's a wind that will carry them away. This is just a diagram that shows melting that is happening on, uh, due to sun and it's not happening on some stove or some uh, controlled environment. Similarly, um, boiling, as we've talked about evaporation first. Now, the difference between boiling and evaporation is now what is clear over here, that boiling happens for a pure liquid. It occurs at a definite temperature that is called the boiling point and it doesn't occur on a range of temperature. It is accompanied by bubbles, as you can see in this um, clip, and they form within the liquid containing the gases or vapor form of the particular substance. Latent heat is needed in both evaporation and boiling, and it is stored in the vapor form, which is released when the vapor is cooled or compressed and changes into liquid again. As we've talked about, now we're going to talk about condensation and solidification. These are the two processes that basically uh, in which heat is given out. This is, um, you know, a, a depiction that basically shows that condensation of steam. It is easily achieved by just contact with a cold surface that as it happens on this cold window pane, it, it, it just directly turns into uh, this runny water. So in condensation, uh, a, a gas changes to liquid state and latent heat of vaporization is released. And similarly, in uh, solidification, heat is again released, but from a solid, uh, but when a liquid is changing into solid. In each state, uh, in each of these cases, the potential energy of the molecules decreases. 
Now, uh, this is another topic that needs to be discussed uh, that is related to evaporation. That uh, evaporation in evaporation, we are giving the substance some heat that it needs, uh, that is needed for the particles to basically break free or get the energy that they needed to overcome their intermolecular forces. However, there is a physical effect that can be observed, which is that there is some cooling that happens when a substance is going through evaporation. So the explanation is that evaporation occurs when faster moving molecules escape from the surface of liquid. The average speed and therefore the average kinetic energy of the molecules left behind decreases. The temperature of the liquid falls. Anybody in contact with an evaporating liquid will be cooled by the evaporation. So this is really again self-explanatory that um, you know the faster molecules are the high energy molecules when they escape obviously the overall average kinetic energy decreases so there is a cooling effect for some time uh, the uses are really uh, fascinating with this one that the water evaporates from our skin when we sweat and we can feel this cooling effect this is the way of body uh, body losing unwanted heat and keeping a constant temperature that is how our homeostasis occurs that our body maintains this temperature through sweating and uh, you know the cooling effect is a part of it after vigorous exercise there is a risk of body being overcooled especially in a drought it is then less able to resist infection either acts as a local anesthetic by chilling as well as cleaning your air your arm when you're having an injection so that is also another thing Similarly, in refrigerators, freezers, and air conditioning systems, it, the, the evaporation, the cooling effect by evaporation is a really important one, and it is used as a large scale in different coolants, etc. And volatile liquids, they also have this, uh, you know, they also, the perfumes, they have these volatile liquids uh, because, uh, you know, they can evaporate easily. And they also, if you put some deodorant on your skin or after taking a bath, you can observe this, uh, you can observe that that happens or even observe cooling so this is it for today thank you so much